For section 6.5, we're applying percents to discount and markup. So what you'll learn is solving real-world problems involving markup and solving real-world problems involving discounts. Very applicable um, situations for when percentages are used. So we have two voca sorry, three vocabulary words, markup, selling price, and discount. And you have the vocabulary words right here for you on page 275. So make sure you get those definitions down. And let's take a look at example one. Find the selling price if a store pays $42 for a pair of inline skates and the markup is 25%. So we're going to take that $42 and add on 25%. There's two different ways to do that. Change 25% to a decimal, 0.25, and then multiply it by 42. The markup is $10.50. Now, if it's asking for just the markup, you would say $10.50, but it's asking for the selling price. So what you need to do is you need to take that $42 and add in the $10.50, so the selling price is $52.50. That's method one. Method two looks a lot like what we looked at last uh, section, or last lesson, where we take 100% plus 25%, so that 100% includes the price of the skates and then the 25% adds in the markup. So when you multiply by 1.25, your answer is 52.50 in one step versus the two steps in method one. So it's really just a preference for you. I'll show both of those methods for the got it problem at the bottom of page 275. It wants to know the selling price if the store pays $75 and the markup is 40%. So I could take 75, times 0 0.40 and that would give me the amount of the markup so 75 times 0.4 is $30 okay so the amount of the markup is $30 but $30 added on to the price the store pays gives me $105 the method two way of doing that is 75 times 1.40, and when you multiply that out, you get $105 in one step. On page 276, example two talks about a discount, and again, you have two different methods of finding that. So a discount is when you take something off of the original price, we see discounts all over the place when things are on sale. So Summer Sports is having a sale. The price of something is $59, and $59, it's on sale for 65% off. So one way to do this is to take 65% as a decimal, 0 0.65, multiply that by point, sorry, multiply that by $59. The discount is $38.35. Don't stop there. That's what a lot of students forget to do is that they forget to take the price of the volleyball, take away the discount. $20.65 is actually the price, the sale price. Now here's where it's just a little bit tricky, but it makes sense here. Method two, if you pay for 100% of the volleyball, then you would pay for $59, right? But if it's 65% off, that means you don't pay 65%. You do pay the remaining 35%. So if I take 35% times 59, I get that same price in one step that I got up here in method one, only I didn't have to do two steps. So a little bit different. Let's take a look at the example here. I'll do it both ways. A magazine subscription is $35, and it's on sale for 67% off. So I could take $35 times 0.67, and that is 35 times 0.67, $23.45. So 
$23.45 is not the price, we have to subtract that from the original price, which is $12.22. For some reason, that's not coming out to the answer listed here. So I'm going to type that in one more time. Oh, and I think I see what I did. 35 times 0 0.67 is 2345. And I think I used that 0 0.67 as part of my price. So it's actually $35 minus 23.45. And when I borrow here, I get the $11.55. So method one is to multiply by the discount and then subtract. If something is 67% off, that means I don't pay for 67%, but I do pay for 33% of it. So if I take $35, $35 times 0.33, 35 times 0.33, I get that $11.55 answer in one answer or in one step versus the two steps. It's all amount of, um, a matter of your preference. So method one or method two, um, try a few each way and see how it goes. Example three is talking about a discount and it's wanting to know what the original price was. Okay, so we know it's a 25% discount and then the selling price was $172.50. So in this case, it's saying the original price is R, the unknown. You can have X, whatever you want. Okay, and they're going back to that percent proportion that we learned back in section or lesson 6.1. $172.50 is the part, X, or in this case, R is the whole, 75% over 100, or 75 over 100. When you cross multiply, you get 172.50 times 100, which you see right here, and then 75 times R, which you see right here. Divide both sides by 75, and we get that the original price was 230. Let's take a look at number three at the bottom of page 276. 75% discount on a sofa. She paid $225. What was the original price? So again, if we use that percent proportion, we'll use 75% and we'll put that over 100 because 75% 75 is 75 per 100. And we're going to put 225 as the part that she paid and we want to know what that original price is. So we're going to cross multiply 225 times 100, which is 22,500. And then we're going to cross multiply 75 and x, which is 75x. When we divide both sides by 75, we get that the original price was $900. Again, we're tying this all together using information we already know from previous sections. We're just applying it to word problems and different situations. So example four, we're talking about an original price of $2.95, but it's being uh, offered at a discount, and we're also talking about sales tax. So tying in a few more things. So the amount of the discount is 30%. And so again, taking that 30% away from 100% to get 70%. So step number one is to find 70% of 295. You might be wondering, could I have taken 295 times 0.3 and subtracted it? Yes, you can. But in this case, they use the uh, different method. So we have that the discounted price, when we multiply by 0.7, is 206.5. Now sales tax gets added on. And one way you can do that is to multiply by just the sales tax, which in this case would be 0 0.0825. But if you want to include the price of the item 
and the sales tax, you multiply by 100% plus the 8.25% or 108.25. So that's where this 1.0825 comes from. Again, that's just eliminating steps for you. So when we take the discount and add in the tax, we get the final price, which is $223.54. I really want you to pay attention to this problem because that's what your explain everything is. You're going to find three items and you're going to calculate a discount and you're going to add in sales tax and then report the final prob problem or uh, answer. So in this case, we have a CD that's $11.95. It's on sale for 20% and tax is 5.5%. So, starting with the discount first, if I didn't pay for 20% of it, I did pay for 80%. Notice that 80 and 20 add up to 100%. Could you multiply 11.95 times 0 0.20 and then subtract it? Yes, you could. But I'm going to make things easy for myself and take 11.95 times 80. 0 0.80. And when I use my calculator to speed this process up, 11.95 times 0.8, I get 9.56. And so the price of the CD is $9.56 after the discount. Then I'm going to add in sales tax. Could I multiply by 0 0.055 and then add that amount on? Yes, I could. But the one-step method is to multiply by 1.055. And I know that that's not lined up correctly here, but I'm going to be using a calculator anyway. So the one makes sure that I include the original price and then the 0 .0 0 0.055 includes the tax. So bring up my calculator and take 9.055. 5.6 times 1.055, which is 10.0858, 10.0858, and money only goes to two decimal places, so I'll look at those two numbers. That 5 is going to round it up to $10.09, okay? So multi-step problems here by finding a discount and the sales tax. Just make sure to show your work and think through the process. And then when you're done, make sure your answer makes sense. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, request a Google Hangout, watch the video tutors, look through the examples. You have lots of resources to help you out with these problems. Good luck.